go. Here we go. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All right, we go. There's a oh, oh, there's a lady and a dog. Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> We've had such a wonderful day today. We've made podcasts. We've been for a walk. We had a Cornish pasty. We had a pasty. But do you know what? As a special treat for afternoon tea, because you've been so good today, I think we should have some bread and honey. Oh, yum. Yeah. Oh, magnificent. So I've been to the local bakery and I've got some a wholemeal loaf of bread. Oh, oh look gee, at that. that smells good. All spongy. Oh, I love it. You love it. Do you like wholemeal bread? I would, do. Would you like the crust or would you like a piece from the middle? Look, it's kind of, I, I feel like I want to eat the crust later on, but the first one, I want to have a bit in the middle. You want a bit from the middle? Okay, well, it's a bit decadent. Are you a wholemeal bread kind of guy or more a white bread kind of guy normally? No, I like wholemeal bread. I mm-hmm. do. You've got to cut this thick though. How thick would you like it? Uh, like a thumb width, but don't okay. like, I'll move my thumb out the way. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, it's lovely. oh, look at that. Lovely. But you want this slice here. You want a, a non... Yeah. Of course, I've washed my hands. It's pretty good evenly cut. It's a little bit lopsided, but it's thick enough. I'm very happy. And here's a slice for me. I like mine a bit thinner. I think yours is thicker. You can have that slice because I care about you and I want you to have the favourite slice. Good. Okay, and we'll put the crust to one side. Yeah, we'll have that later. And here I have salted English butter with a lovely picture of the English countryside on the front. Oh, that's lovely. That's so English. Are you a butter man or a margarine man? Oh, no, butter. Oh, yeah. Because I'm normally like margarine. No, we have butter. I love it. How much butter would you like on your slice of bread? Oh, not much butter. A lot of butter. (laughs) Not much, yeah. That's like when, do you take sugar in your tea? Normally I don't, but yeah, go on. (laughs) How about that? That's good. That's a, well, hang on. Is that, oh, that's your thin one there. It's spreading quite well. You know how often with French bread, if the butter's a bit hard, it gets stuck in one bit and you basically end up with butter in one big corner and then a bit of a token effort everywhere else. Oh, no, I, I left it out so that it wouldn't be too cold. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you can't put it in the fridge. It gets too hard. And we have a jar here of smooth and sweet set honey. Oh, yum. Is this local honey, do you know? I did buy this at the local store, so I'm not sure. Delicious. A bit thicker than that. How about that? That's nice. Green guts. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect time of day for a honey sandwich as well. Sort of late in the afternoon, but still a while till dinner. I've gone a bit overboard with the butter on my piece. Sorry. That's, that's way too much butter. It's one of those deliberate accidents. <laughs> You're going to have to have the crust too to use up all that butter. I have a little extra treat to go with your piece of uh, bread and honey. Would you like a glass of milk? I would love a glass of milk. Now, Normally I have skim milk in the house, but because it's we're being wholesome today, we've got whole milk. This, has been, this milk's been opened. Did you open this milk? I had a cup of coffee before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you broke into our nice whole milk. It was very nice. That is a lot of milk. I would normally drink a whole milk, although I would have a nice coffee. Oh, wow. This is delicious. <laughs> All right, here we go. Bread and honey. I was reading the Magic Faraway Tree the other day, and bread and honey was like the treat that the mother would prepare for them. And having it with a glass of milk seems like the right thing to do. This is great. I'm going to bite in. Oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. This is, this is where your loud eating comes into its own. <laughs> You look a bit unsure. No, no, I'm, I'm happy. There's, n- there's nothing more pure than just honey and butter on bread. Mm, bloody thick crust. Mm. What were wholesome meals you used to have when you were young? Like, What would your mum make for you as like a treat? Well, there's wholesome meals and then there's a treat. Oh, you- <laughs> no. Okay. My sandwiches every day at school were often peanut butter and honey. Right. And that was a bit of a staple, peanut butter and honey every day. And I really love that. Funnily well, enough, although we're having honey now, and I love I love honey, especially honey on crumpets. Funnily enough, I have bad memories of honey sandwiches. The first time I ever lost a tooth while like eating was while I was eating a honey sandwich. And while I was biting it, I suddenly looked down in the sandwich and there was a little bit of blood and a tooth. And I was like, oh, mum. You know, you freak out when you first lose a tooth. So I remember freaking out and, you know, asking my mum for help and stuff like that. So for a while afterwards, I associated honey sandwiches with losing teeth and I didn't really like having honey sandwiches, but I got over it. Fair enough. <laughs> you seem to be okay today. Mm, I'm fine. Hang on, I'm going in with the milk. Mmm, mm, that is refreshing. <laughs> is there a better drink to have with a piece of bread and honey than milk? Like, What would you, have, what would you opt for? Normally if I drink milk, I have a little bit of it in my coffee 
Sorry, I, I, this is when I have an instant coffee at home. If I'm out with a brewed coffee, I just have it black. And I love a black coffee, mm. brewed. Or I might have an iced coffee. If I, that's generally when I'd have a big thing of milk. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the milk. The glass of milk. You've got to learn about the glass of milk. It's a wholesome classic. It does feel like it's wholesome. Remember in the book where, where the wild things are? Mm. He goes off and has his adventures, comes back. And his supper, did they, it says his supper was still warm, wasn't it? We don't know what the supper was, though, but I bet there was a glass of milk. I don't know that story well. But, like, cookies and a glass of milk, a glass of milk for Santa Claus. Like, a glass of milk is where it's at when it comes to your perfect wholesome drink. There's no more wholesome drink than a glass of milk, except maybe a pitcher of lemonade. <laughs> a pitcher of lemonade. That's another, that's another Enid Blyton <laughs> classic. Mm. Well, let's, have a, let's each have a plum and a pitcher of lemonade. Well, you mm. share a picture of lemonade, I imagine. You don't have it all yourself. This is the bread's all squishy. It's all thick on top, the butter and the honey. Is there a reason you're not making another one straight away? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make another one. Like, do you want a whole one or half a one? Maybe we'll share a half one now. Let's, let's share the crust because sharing is another wholesome thing to do. And using the crust is an important wholesome thing to do as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Eating the crust is makes your hair curly or something, doesn't it? Isn't it? That's the... oh, something like that. Oh, no. Yes. Something like that. I always wondered why I would be told, eat the crust because it makes your hair curly. Because the last thing in the world I would have wanted was curly hair. Maybe it doesn't make your hair go curly. It stops your hair going stops curly. Your hair go. <laughs> it's one or the other. It can't be both. Brady's uh, spreading it thick. He's Even though we've now got half a piece of bread, he's taken the same amount of... Butter. Oh, he's using it for both. Okay, yeah. that's just as well. <laughs> Look, I like butter, all right? Everyone go out and buy butter because there's about to be a shortage because Brady's <laughs> making a sandwich. <laughs> the sound of honey being spread on butter is not particularly loud, is it? <laughs> the thing about bread and honey, like when you read about it in a in Blyton book, is the thing that makes it so lovely is not just that it's yummy, but it's kind of, it sort of smacks a little bit of, like being a little bit poor. Like It's simple food. Hmm. That's what it is. So it's like not... It's not processed, but it's like you would imagine, like in this little cottage out in the woods, you just imagine them like having fresh bread and honey is like a really big deal to them. Whereas when you live next to a supermarket, it's not such a big deal. And that's what's sort of so pure about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a simple food. It's accessible. And yet it is, you know, magnificent. Mm. Have you ever baked bread yourself or had one of those bread makers in the house? No, have you? We had one for a while when I was sharing a house with someone years and years ago and we would set a timer so it would start cooking. we put all the ingredients in, it would start cooking in the middle of the night or something so it was perfectly ready first thing in the morning. That was amazing. So the house would smell of bread, smell like a bakery, magnificent. I can imagine that is lovely. Why is that not part of your life now? Making your own bread. We did have a bread maker and we don't have it anymore and I don't know what happened to it. It is a little bit like having one extra implement, in, like how many things you want to have in the kitchen. You know what I mean? It takes time and energy and so you, you, it's like one more task in the day. So it kind of slips back a little bit. It becomes like a bit of a chore, like, oh, have you put the bread in the bread maker? Like it's like putting the bins out or something. Well, yeah, and because it doesn't make large loaves, you kind of have to do it every day or a couple of days. Somewhere along the line it drops off the priority list, but... It does smell magnificent, and it does taste magnificent. All right. Well, there we go. Would you like another piece, or you're right? Oh, uh, I'm right for now. All right. We had very thick pieces. <laughs> we, did, we, we had rather. We had. A, I was very generous with the slicing. I'll put that back in the bag. Keep it fresh for later. Something else that's very wholesome is to not spoil your dinner with your treat. That's right. That's right. That's right. We are having dinner later. Make sure you wrap it up properly. Butter back in the butter holder. We hope you've enjoyed this wholesome moment. Well, after that delicious bread and honey and milk, I can't think of anything better to do than flying a kite. Oh, absolutely. And we've got a new one here. It's boxed up. It's a diamond kite. Traditional diamond kite, how I like them. Just a nice pure diamond with the with a cross wooden cross in the middle and ribbons on the string and we've come to a gorgeous hill overlooking a church and the sea and it's beautiful and breezy, perfect kite flying conditions, I would imagine, not being a particularly experienced kite flyer. Oh, it is, it is. In fact, the only thing that could make this more perfect, or indeed more wholesome, is if we'd actually built the kite ourselves no. with the balsa wood and, you know, the stuff. But shall I open the box? Yeah, we've got like a vintage one. It's like vintage style, this kite. Oh, yeah. Very colourful. They are nice colours, aren't they? Lovely. Now, this box is going to get blown away. Yeah. All right, All right, I'm opening up one end. It's covered in plastic. 
This bright. is the last time today that string won't be all in knots and tie. Big bright primary colours. I'm liking this. I'm loving it. Oh, is that, <laughs> is that important? Oh, hang on. All right, so it's very windy and we're opening out the kite. Oh, look, it's got little ribbons tied around it like in a like fairy tale or something. I love oh, it. Oh, lovely. I need to put this little black crossbar in so the cross will work properly. Okay. All oh, right, yep. So you're making that. You want me to hold that? I got it. Is that a spare or is that? Oh, that's okay. So Tim's like assembling the cross. It's quite windy up here and this kite seems quite flimsy. So Tim's using these little black plastic rods. I would have preferred wood. Are they wood or are they plastic? They're plastic. They're plastic. Mm. Not quite as wholesome as that, That's disappointing. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> All right. This is going to fly for sure, isn't it, Tim? I think it is. I think it is. We we talked about what role we'd play. Whoa! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. no. <laughs> oh there's been a breakage already. It's been ripped to pieces. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh. I'm doing repairs. Repairs are a very wholesome thing to be doing. Out there. I don't think. I'm not sure this kite's going to be strong enough for this wind. Do you? I think the wind's too strong. I think once it gets in formation, mm. it'll be okay. Mm. So tell me what to do. Once once. Uh, what do I do? I hold the string. So Tim's now tying the big long string thing to the kite. All right, I'm tying a knot. I don't feel like any of the knots I know is going to be adequate. So I do what most people do, which is just tie the same knot over and over and over again. <laughs> but hopefully that's enough to hold it. I mean, this is the string they've provided. I don't know. I'm going to look on the box and see if it gives you like wind speed conditions or something. Hang on. So I'm reading about the terminology here. We've got the spreader, the cross connector, the spine, the bridle point. The toe point, the flying line, oh, the f flying handle. Tim has attached the two spreader rods as shown in figure one. He's now tying the flying line. All right, are we ready? Yeah, so what, 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 yeah, okay. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take... I think it's a case you've got to hold, you've got to hold it in a way that the wind doesn't blow it apart in your hands. Take up your cross with the, <laughs> with the kite attached to it, and I'll hold this and try and let it go. And I think it'll just go up in the air. So you're going to hold, like, the flying handle. and I you want to hold this part. Do you want to hold this part? I want to do whichever part's easier. Okay, hold the handle then. All right, all right. And then what, what do I do? What do I do when you get out far away from me and chuck it in the air? You just kind of hold it, basically. Just hold it, and you kind of feel it'll sort of rise on its own. Yeah. Um, Do I like let out more string to give it more and more height? Well, it'll go further away, which will make it go higher and higher. In a funny way, I think that makes it a little bit easier. So you just sort of do a little bit of wrist action like this. And then All, right. All right. Hang on a second then. Hang on. I'll put this box down here. Okay, so get ready. I'm going to throw it up in the air. you got to kind of hold it, man. Are you ready? It's beautiful. Here we go. Yeah, it's up in the air. It's flying. Yes, well done, man. Let off a little bit more string. Oh, hang on. Hang on. I'll lift it up. That's right, I just need to put it up a bit more string. Whoa. Got to get it up high. Whee! There we go, man. Well done. It's off the, gr it's off the ground about a good foot. <laughs> you got to get it longer and then run a bit, get a right angle. Okay, Brady's running along the plane. It's a beautiful sight. The place. The, the, the kind of top in the air again. Yes, yes. <laughs> well done, man. We've lost the hat. We got a hat down. <laughs> I've got the hat. Drink's caught on a uh, little piece of grass. There was bound to be some fatalities. Uh-oh, now Brady's doing untangling. Yeah, we've got to get it out of here. All right, Brady's just doing his own untangling work now. All right, I'm gonna throw it up in the air again. Whee! Okay. <laughs> Maybe if you go downhill a bit, it'll go up. Go downhill. I've got to, hang on, go! Oh, there we go, it's flying again. Oh, 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 I just twisted my ankle. <laughs> I've got to somehow get it to go high. It's got to get up on top. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Okay, um, what we're going to do, we're heading back towards the concrete bunker. I'm going to climb up on top. We're hoping the additional height launches off. All right, now I'm up on top of the concrete bunker. It's going to give it extra launch. I feel like it's going to rise. And here we go, go. Oh, oh, it dropped. What? Oh, no, no, no. He's running. It needs to get high. It's holding itself there. That's actually a very difficult move to hold it suspended. It's about a foot, a, a meter or so off the ground. Heron's pulling at one end. Where's my phone gone? Oh, okay. Fly it, man. Maybe if I get down really low and take the photo, it'll look like it's up in the air. <laughs> You're holding it there. Just get above the horizon, you silly guy. <laughs> All right, give me a go now. All right. You hold on to that as well. 
hold it so it's like a cross straight up and then just sort of that's it like to like yeah and just sort of throw it up if you like so it's faces towards me oh I'm running as fast as I can and so in the up in the air it's not really going I don't know how it's doing oh no we've broken the string there's a string break oh no Bono tells a story about going out to fly a kite in a hill with his kids trying to be a good dad one day and it all just went wrong and they were bored and the kite broke and he ended up writing, going home writing a song called Kite about how <laughs> you try and failed to do these good wholesome things That was a, oh, you were more successful than I. Then again, I was launching it. All right, let's do this one more time. Right. I've got uh, the string. Oh. All right, we've got a bit of an audience here. Brady, one, two, three, go, go. Yeah, it's up in the air. I got it up, I got it up. It's flying. Hold it up, hold it up. Stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. Hold it up. Yeah, that's right. That's it. Get up higher and higher and higher, higher and higher. Oh, well, I'm getting a bit of air, but I'm not being able to keep it. I haven't found the slipstream yet. I've heard stories about Japanese workers that use kites to get bricks up to high buildings they're making in older times, which is staggering when you consider what I'm doing now. The OH&S must be, <laughs> wouldn't allow me to be working on their work sites. Okay, we're going to run together. Freddie's going to launch it while we run. Here we go. I'm watching. <laughs> go. Here we go. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> All right. We go. There's a. Oh. Oh, there's a lady and a dog. Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I wouldn't even get it up. There's nothing like a dog. i got no button to push. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? <laughs> that was the best flight. Does want to fly. We've got to get maybe on a steeper angle. No, I won't fall off the cliff. Oh, there we go. That's holding a bit. There we go. There we go. A couple of meters high. It's looking lovely. This is pretty good form, I think. Yeah. I'm running down towards the cliff. Whoa. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, all right. Certainly good for the lungs, that's for sure. Did you want to have another go? You can dance on the breeze over houses and trees With your fist stolen tight to the string of your kite Just look at that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I just, oh, look at that, it's up in the air. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Up to the high Oh, don't, don't, man, I didn't get it. Oh, well done. Oh, look at that. Do you know what I did? I just changed the position of the spine. <laughs> the cross was too low. Would, would you say that's the greatest moment of your life? <laughs> oh, <there. laughs> now it's flying like a dream. It's 10 feet in the air. That's it, and it's going up. It's dancing. You're making it dance, man. <laughs> you are. You've suddenly turned into a five-star... You should turn professional. Woo, woo, your kite up where the air is light. Let's go. No, let's go fly at night. Up to the highest height. Let's go fly at night and send it soaring. Oh, it's oh, he's broken free. It's flying again. It's fly, fly, man, fly. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, we, I think we're feeling exhausted but satisfied. That was about 25 minutes of frustration and thinking we were really rubbish at flying kites. And then Tim made a few little adjustments to the, the cross beams on the kite. And suddenly we couldn't stop it from flying. Strategic adjustments. Strategic adjustments. It was like the, we were like the Wright brothers up here on Kitty Hawk, just tweaking, <laughs> tweaking the wings until we mastered flight. <laughs> And then we flew into the sun, too close to the sun <laughs> we, and we crashed. <laughs> we did fly too close to the sun. <laughs>